It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, James, his question. I'm going to pose the question and then give you the setup, guys. Would you pay off your mortgage at 3%? His setup is that he has no other debt. He's keeping more than the payoff amount in cash that could pay for five years of expenses. And he and his wife are fixed 56 and they are retired, but she is still working. So he's retired, I guess, and she is still working. So would you pay off the mortgage at 3%? And he said, so pay off, and he's got more than the payoff sitting in cash. Yes. What was that next sentence after that? Like this was part of emergency fund or it was just extra money? That it says, I am keeping more than the payoff amount in cash that could pay for five years of expenses. Five so that's just kind of a of bit expenses. of info on how much he has saved. And they're 56? Yes. Great. I already know what you're going to say. I can, I can feel you looking at me. I already know what you're going to say. I, don't, I, I mean, but this is such a hard one because I've even had, you know, as I've shared with you guys, I mean, I, I had this goal that by the time I was 50, I wanted to be completely debt free. Um, but it is one of those things where I've, because I have, you know, you had the devils that, the remember the old cartoons where they'd have an angel uh-huh. on one shoulder and the devil on the other? Um, I feel like, Bo, the, the devil and the angel are you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um and it's all those conversations that you and I've had about my two and a half percent mortgage rate on my on my own house, mm-hmm. so, you know, because I I'm down to the last seven percent of my house. I mean, I've paid this thing down so low, and I'm and I'm like, yeah, but two and a half percent. I mean, we're about to. I wouldn't be surprised if in nine months from now, if the Federal Reserve is as aggressive as they said they're going to be about inflation. My cash reserves might be earning two and a half percent. I mean, it, so that that really makes you second guess. What is my strategy here? Um, let me tell you before we get in the nuances of what's going on currently. Our general guidance that's timeless is that anybody under forty five years of age, when compounding growth is so so powerful, you know, hence the eighty eight times over, uh, every dollar has the potential to become something pretty incredible. I want you not paying off that super low debt. There's a reason that out of the financial order of operations, step nine is low interest debt. It's because I do want you maximizing the wealth building process. I think somebody who's over 45, which James is, because he Mm -hmm. he shared with us he's in his mid-50s, you don't have to worry about the opportunity cost as much as a 20-something or even a 30-something does. But it is one of those things where you have to start asking yourself, what's the purpose of this money? What's the why? And this is where I'll get into the nuance, and I'll be curious to get your color Mm -hmm. on this, is that I think there's actually a thread-the-needle moment here because he says he has five years of living expenses. Mm -hmm. And he says he's quasi-retired. His wife is still working. So i got to believe that they're all getting close to – maybe his wife is getting close to leaving the workforce too – why not? I love creating that compromise. It's a what's called a win-win situation. You could take, we tell retirees, if you want to be super conservative, have at least three years of cash reserves out there. That gets you through any economies that, that might be facing mm-hmm. us. You could look at um, five years. So you got two years excess. Two years, yeah. Go ahead, throw that down, get some of that debt paid off, and then um, you know, and then the rest of this can stay you know liquid for you and, and, and your and your spouse's um, retirement. That's kind of my compromise on how you thread the needle there, Bo. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't disagree with you. Uh, I think the ultimate question you have to ask is what is your why? Uh, let's not forget, money is nothing more than a tool that allows us to do the things we want to do the way we want to do them, right? It's nothing more. It's not the goal. It's not the outcome. It's not the strategy. It's just a tool to help us get there. Well, if you're, James, if your why is to be debt-free and have one less thing, there's nothing wrong with that. If your goal is to optimize your dollars and make sure they're working as effectively and efficiently for you as possible, then there's nothing wrong with taking that and putting that mo- uh, taking that money and employing it elsewhere. But you have to answer the question: What is the why? What's the reason? What's the thing that I'm going for? In the scenario that you're in, it does not sound like this decision is a pass or fail. Oftentimes, uh, when we're meeting with clients and we go through their retirement scenario, we'll run one scenario where they cash money out of the portfolio to pay off the mortgage, and we'll run another scenario where they actually keep the debt in place. And sometimes it is pass fail, right? Sometimes it's you know. 77% probability of success versus 92% probability of success. In the circumstance that you're in, without knowing the different 
uh, without knowing the different nuance of your situation, you're at that beautiful stage four of wealth, it sounds like, where you get to do what you want, the way you want, when you want. And when you're in that scenario, you get to make decisions based on your why. So if you want to pay it off and it will not affect your long-term plan, then that's great. If, like me, you would have a hard time satisfying really, really low interest debt, knowing the opportunity cost of doing that, and you choose to just pay the mortgage out, I think that that's okay too. You have earned the right to be in the place where you get to make the decision, and either way that you go is probably the right answer. I I do like people to be fully debt-free, though, at Full financial independence sure. and retirement. Though, I like because, people to have the ability to be debt free too. Because, I agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're the same page. I same know page. we disagree slightly on this, but there is something that first year that no one's in the workforce anymore, especially when we're facing volatility in the marketplace. You're already going to have a lot of, even if you are a very disciplined investor and money manager. You're going to have emotional stuff kick up that you've never experienced before. And if you can have your house, your your shelter completely paid for, I think it will give you a layer of peace of mind that will hopefully shield you from some of that behavioral stuff that could could really hurt you in your long term, you know, enjoyable, hopeful retirement. So I think we I think we navigated that well. Like I said, I'm even navigating this myself. It's just tough in these weird situations that we're in with the economy.